That's a very interesting one. I made it on purpose. And uh, it shows about some ideas you're going to see about the investment behavior, <coughs> which is my experience tell me, tells me is uh, pretty true. And um, let's suppose you just um, graduate out of the American University in Bulgaria. You think you're the hottest shot out there. You know it all. And it's just about time that you go and make a killing on the market, right? So you take your thousand dollars and you go and you buy the first shares of XYZ. What is going to happen, chances are it's, that's how it's going to play out. Say you just buy them and in about a week you look in your account and you see this thing going up to 25. Now you say, I told you, I know I was, I knew I was exceptionally smart. And it turns out this thing was pretty easy. Investment is easy. Took me just a week and I made 25% on my money. Boy, if this, tips keep think, if this thing keeps going, I could probably become a millionaire, quit my stupid day job and make a fortune in about two, three years and maybe retire. This is just great. In another week, you look back in your account and you see this thing is down. You say, huh. That was kind of unexpected, but of course, I have seen this, you know, just as it was, you know, 25, let me wait another week, it's going to be certainly going to be back there. And of course, next day you or next week you wake up, this is a 2250, you say, of course, see, I was right again. Now, in no time, this will be right back, you know, where it was. Now, this thing in third week comes here. Now, that's new. This time you see the color red in your book and you say, ha. Huh, so far, it was, you know, only profits and, uh, you know, eventually break even. Now I'm kind of losing money. That's kind of not good. You know, I kind of am quickly losing my grandmother's money here. What do I do? Okay, well, of course, I'm not going to capitulate now. I'm just going to hold on. It's going to come back, of course. And next week, what you see, of course, it's right back. And you say, that's great. See, I was right. Good thing I didn't panic and I didn't sell. So from here, I know. I'm going to see black again, I mean red again. So what happens here this time, you get really panicked. Now this is something you haven't seen. Now your account is half its value. You're starting to really panic. You realize, hey, you know, I lost 50%. However, it takes 100%, a whole double for me to even come back with my money. But, you know, I'm just going to hang in there and I'll wait. So next day you come up, you see, aha, halfway in. Too much pain for me, sucks, but the moment I wait, I'm sick of this garbage stock, I'm just gonna dump it. What really is gonna happen is next morning when you wake up, you would really panic and you're gonna say, well, wasn't I completely wrong? And then you're gonna capitulate right here. This is your absolutely typical human behavior. And is of course the absolute irrational human behavior, but it happens over and over and over and most people just can't help but do it on the stock exchange. And to uh, uh, just um, elaborate a little bit better, let's assume we have a simplified stock market here. Let's assume we have three players, the good, bad, ugly, whatever I call them. So let's say one of them is a very sharp cat. He knows he does his homework, very hard working guy. The average is, the other one is an average investor. And the third one is the massive majority of people, which are the dummy investors, All right? So let's say we have a stock and it sells at $5. And Mr. Smart Cat, nobody's talking about this stock. It's just some stock somewhere. Somebody says, well, you know, I think maybe there is something here. He sits down. He does an extensive homework. He researches this and he says, well, you know what? I think $5. That thing is cheap. I think maybe, I mean, at least 10, maybe 20, it becomes expensive. So he moves in and quietly buys. He's just by himself, he doesn't know much. So his buying demand pushes up the price of this thing. Now this thing kind of becomes a market mover. It gets notice on the radars of other investors. So comes the average investor who says, huh, 
Let me take a look into this. All right, it was five, now it's 10. Maybe, great, okay, I'm in. It sounds like a very hot thing. So he buys a 10, or uh, whatever we got. Yeah, whatever. That buying pressure puts further demand, so the prices goes up to 15. Now this thing is news everywhere. It's on the front page of yahoo.com finance. And then comes Mr. Joe Blow and says, ha, I told you, that's the next best thing. I am coming in. You can't go wrong. Look at this chart. This thing is going great. So he comes in. Problem is, this guy, when he made his judgment, he said, well, maybe at 15, this is too expensive. So he says, why don't I sell at 15? That was my plan anyway, right? So the moment the last and the, 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 the least intelligent people are in the market, pretty much the demand is over. There is no more demand to push the stock price even further. So at this point, this demand collapses. I mean, not collapses, but it peaks. The selling pressure from this guy puts it down. He didn't sell here. He said, I'm going to hang in there. He sold again here and made nothing. This guy kept. And this thing, when he sold, there was further crash. And he, he surrendered and sold right here. And guess who he sold it to, you know? The guy who thought, well, huh, this thing is back at five. Maybe I come back in, you know? So that's how it works. <laughs> it's your classic investment psychology story.